Now, Botswana, as well as ranking very well in terms of its transparency, it's also the number one diamond producing country um, in the world. But the sector isn't without controversy. Um, the De Beers case, for example, the mining and trading group that relocated from London to Botswana um, a couple of years ago, was praised by the international community as an African miracle. Um, but it's also been uh, criticized in terms of its intensified mining actions by uh, civil society here in Botswana and around the world. Um, and that was largely because of incidences of forced systematic uh, relocation of indigenous populations um, in the Kalahari region. I just wondered what sort of impact uh, these type of activities have on the environment and on uh, democracy and human rights um, here in Botswana or elsewhere. I mean, what lessons can we learn here? Well, this is where the state becomes very important. If the state does not ensure that they have a good legal framework, regulations, and their enforcement, of course, in order to protect water, land, and air, to start with, the communities where this is, uh, and uh, to ensure that the, the country has a, a land usage mapping yes. so that they can protect arable land and forestry and they can protect the water also that is there beyond the mapping of land and that they have regulations to ensure that this is done. I think it's very dangerous for any country not to have that. Yes. On the other hand, the industries, if they are wise, are going to implement those kinds of measures, do research on technology, invest in technology to, to mitigate and prevent some of that from happening. Because if, if the industry does not believe that this is important, you can find over time ways around the regulation. Yes. So it's important for the industry to, to realize that this is the right thing to do. And it's important for governments to ensure that all industries, not just those that are concerned, behave in the same way for the sake of protecting the people and the resources. And you also, in diamonds, it might be different. But when you're looking at copper, when you're looking at many of the precious metals, are you going to use it all in this generation? What are you keeping for future generations? is also part of the equation that you need to think about. Uh, I mean, right now we're using about 1.5 uh, of the Earth's worth in those resources every year. In 50 years from now, we will have used about 75%. What's left? What do you do after? 